Hello everyone and welcome back to Dishonored. Dishonored. With no you because it's American, you see. Uh, last time we escaped from prison after they murdered the Empress and blamed us, even though we somehow murdered the Empress and kidnapped a child at the same time. Um, apparently we killed a guy. I'm trying. I'm so I'm trying to go through this as non-lethally as possible. Uh, I know that there's going to be times where that doesn't work out. I have learned very quickly that there's no real non-lethal options for when you're in combat. Um, maybe we unlock those later. I could have sworn there was one, but I might just be misremembering. Uh, yeah, at the end of the last mission, we apparently did kill a guy. I don't remember doing that, but apparently we did. I'm going to try and ghost and non-lethal as much as possible throughout this uh gameplay however it's me <laughs> i'm not great at video games and apparently i kill people by accident so you know who's to say what happens next i should have read that we meet at an old bar that's that that was what the beginning said this is samuel we met samuel after we escaped this is the hound pits pub mm -hmm. closed for business half the district marked off is very dead big pub plague right under the Lord Regent's nose and he don't know a thing. Oh. Get you all fancy. This this looks of very much... If anyone finds out what we're up to, the watch will break in with swords drawn. Probably. They like swords And now that you've escaped, the Lord Regent's going to be tearing the city apart. Yeah. Yeah. Props. Take you up to meet oh, Admiral Havlock and the rest problem. of the Lordist. The Admiral's a man to be reckoned with. Anyone can help you find that missing girl, Lady Emily, and clear your name. He can. I like when you say that missing girl, Lady Emily, like she's the heir to the throne or whatever, you know? But also, I I supposedly kidnapped her. But again, I can't stress enough. I couldn't have stabbed the person and kidnapped her at the same time. That makes no sense. Mission clues updated. What are my mission clues? Samuel the Bowman has smuggled you across the river from Coleridge Prison. He works for an underground movement opposed to the illegal right reign of the Lord Regent and has brought you to meet the members of the organization. Yes, that's good. good. Oh, your health carries across missions? That's cool. And also going to be a bad thing for me. There's some zapping noises in there. I'm just going to look around, see if I can find coins. Coins and stuff and things and stuff. Don't mind me, Samuel. I'm still here. I'm definitely paying attention to the things that you're saying and doing. I'm just looking around. What's in there? See? That's why I'm looking around. You find things when you look. An old wreckers yard. Mysteries of Pandicia. At the Academy of Natural Philosophy, they speak of the Pandician continent as a place of wonder where all of life has entwined and blossomed across aeons, producing a vibrant ecology unrivaled in the civilized world. The overseers from the Abbey of the Everyman, by contrast, talk of horror and heresies of cults and submen engaged in brutal, perverse rituals. Some nice casual racism, I suspect, is what's happening in that. Um, the few who have traveled to the far continent and come back to the isles, those who have actually touched the soil there, have returned with notes that describe vast deserts, deep jungles, and outlandish creatures that defy belief. Once in a generation, a great effort is mounted to build a colony there. Yeah, there we go. There's that good old-fashioned colonial racism. In hopes of this someday growing into a port city of to rival Dunwall itself. Uh, but to date, these attempts have all ended in madness or in failure. Well, that's nice. I'll take that map of the Cape of Teeth. That would be a long, a lot of sewing, awkward sewing involved to make a cape out of teeth. Right, and also I can't imagine it's comfortable and so noisy. Can you imagine the unpleasant noise of like teeth jingling and rattling as you're trying to walk around places? What a terrible idea! Who who made this Cape of Teeth? Who did that? Terrible plan. Not a very good tailor. These contain dogs, that's what they are. I was just like, what is there so much going on? Can I go down here? What's down here? Hello? Ooh. Attention nope. all citizens. Curfew extends from sundown to sunrise unless you are otherwise authorized. I Violator authorize myself otherwise and detained when necessary. Remember, the boldest measures are the same. Uh -huh. 
nice to know that there are places that you can definitely go to, but you can't go to yet as well. Copper wire for me. Sorry, I'm just exploring a little bit. I will be there, Samuel. Don't worry. We need to know. I know we need to know who our conspirators are. Our co-conspirators are. Like, we're not the only conspirators, but still. Okay, well, this was fun, but I can't do anything here. Uh, and I imagine if I jump down there, I'll just be stuck. <laughs> Uh, can I get up on this ventilation shaft? Hey up! Yes, I can. Is it worth it? Hey up! Oh, it is worth it. That's cool. There's so much to do. There's more parkouring Attention, than Attention, citizens I of Dunwall. The old port district has been added to the evacuation list. The weeper count for the month of Street I love has that increased. you can go in all these places. The That's fantastic. The that plague ordinances will remain in effect through the month of rain. Stay alert and stay loyal. Uh huh. I can actually open this door. Give me that. Am I in the place I'm supposed to be going, but just the wrong way? I'm in my chambers? I should go downstairs and talk to Samuel. I'm so sorry, Samuel. I was too keen. I was too keen to explore. How do I get down from here? And a hup. And a hup. And a hey. And a hup. And I'm in there. And I can run around here. Oh, there's so much freedom to run around. I love that I was able to get there without ever actually speaking to Samuel. That's cool that you River can do that. River traffic is forbidden from landing in the distillery district due to risk of infectious contact. Violators will be taken to the flooded district for treatment and rehabilitation. That sounds like murder. That's what that sounds like. That sounds like we'll be taken to the district for a murder. I expect they're hard at work in there. Best join them. They'll help you get whoever really killed the Empress. I'm sure the Admiral was anxious to meet you. It wasn't easy getting you here. There's people through there. I don't want to go in. Hello? So we started at last, Admiral. We found our man. Even after six months in Cold Ridge oh, Prison... Was I in there for six months? It was... Nothing. It was yeah, yeah, like it was nothing. No one surprising. knew. He was the personal bodyguard of the Empress. You've heard the stories. I once... Yes, I have. Uh, parkour it still a amazes building me that someone could get to the Empress and a young lady Empress. We can continue this later, Lord Pendleton. The man of the hour is here. Hello, you're creepy. Corvo, looking. I'm Admiral Havelock. Hello, a true you're servant not of the Empire, be good. like you. Until the Lord Regent purged those of us who wouldn't recognize his claim on the throne. Yeah. And I'm Lord Trevor Pendleton. I represent the nobility. You your name, army. funny Trevor. But we all act as equals here at the Hound Pits pub. This is a momentous occasion, Corvo. I'm going to come out with you. We've been building a coalition of loyalists mm -hmm. aimed at ending the Lord Regent's tyranny and like restoring the throne. At risk of execution, we're committed to finding young Lady Emily and seeing her crowned as Empress. We've got big plans, but we can't do any of it without you. Okay. We need your skills, your ability in a fight. Yeah. And in helping us, we're going to help you destroy the men who murdered the Empress. I want to destroy Sorry. people, I just kind of want to know. You must be exhausted. We can discuss this further after you've recovered. But before you retire, you should introduce yourself to Piero. Uh -huh. He's challenging at times. But his industrious mind buys him that right. Okay, Trevor. And Admiral. Yes. Piero's as much an artist as a technician. He's going to be crafting the gear you'll need. Go talk to him, and then get some sleep. Okay. We can talk more when you've rested. I'm gonna raid the place first, though. I'm just gonna do that, because... Have a look thing. No, 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 no. Powdered crystal. Pardon me, powdered crystal. A tartlet! Oh, I say. I do love a tartlet. Yeah, there's some coins down here, too. Give me that coin. Yes, thank you. Uh, what? Good oh, to I have you Someone want to explain what to me what just went on? Nope. No, I uh, I guess I'll just be confused. That works for me. I'm going down into the basement because I can and I want to. What's down here? Goodies for me? Yes. Yes, processed whale oil. More processed whale oil. Because ah. that's part of the... Um, part of the, the premise of this place is it, it basically runs on whale oil. 
Which is awful, really. Um, but, you know. It is very much so kind of a Victorian, dystopian future. Except it, it feels like it's very much so meant to be, like, the British style. But everyone in it is American. Um... Who lives in a house like this? <laughs> sell your plates. It's taking things to sell. Open sesame! And a pouch for me! Who's it? No one will know. We welcome Corvo into our home. What does he do? He runs around stealing a bunch of things. My furnishings have been installed at last with oh. no small amount of complaint. Hey. About that antiquated boat. The others have no idea what it's like to suffer as I Can have. I have that tartlet? Speaking of which. That Wallace! Tartlet, please breathe two bottles of Dunwall Red, never mind which, and fetch a clean glass. I just want the tartlet. <sighs> I'm going to eat that. I'll begin again tomorrow. We good? Pleased to meet you, Master Corvo. I saw you at court in happier days. He doesn't mind but the, the tartlet. That's so cool. I was once a close ally to the Lord Regent, Hiram Burroughs. Mm -hmm. Back when he was just the spy master. He's one manipulative bastard, I can tell you that. I I can tell you that from the way he framed me for doing two things at once. Hello, Wallace. If I may, I am the personal assistant to Lord Pendleton okay. and one of the senior servants at Pendleton House, as was my father. Oh, good for now you. I am entrusted with this house, the home of the Loyalists. I have never seen the Admiral fail at any venture. Good. If order can be restored to the city of Dunwall, I believe he can do it. If anyone can get your old life back, it's him. Love it. Love it, love it. I'm going to just open Violators it. Violators will be subject to interrogation. Pop all the songs. Oh, what will we do with a drunken whaler? What will we do with a drunken whaler? What will we do with a drunken whaler? Lie in the morning. Feed him to the hungry rats for dinner. Feed him to the hungry rats for dinner. Feed him to the hungry rats for dinner. Or lie in the morning. He, he, and up she rises. We, he, and up she rises. We, he, and up she rises. Or lie in the morning. Slice his throat with a rusty cleaver. Slice his throat with a rusty cleaver. Slice his throat with a rusty cleaver. Or lay in the morning. Stuff him in a sack and throw him over. Stuff him in a sack and throw him over. Stuff him in a sack and throw him over. Lie in the morning. Necessary. Oh, that was charming. Remember, the Ouch. boldest measures are the same. Person. Hello, ma'am. What's your name? I'm going to eat this chicken pear. I'll read that in a minute. My. You must be Corvo. I am. I am Lydia, at your service. Cool. Your room is upstairs and ready. Thanks. When they told me who it was, well... I thought you'd be older, like the Admiral. That's it? Just gonna, I thought you were going to be old. Uh, which way are you going, Lydia? Litany of the White Cliff. And I say to you, brothers, it is here that we will make our stand as a righteous force against the growing darkness. It is here that we unite against the spirits of the unknown. Oh, it's the High Overseer, isn't it? Of the unknown that would drag us screaming into the night, never to return to our homes, to our families. Together we will serve as a rod to those who will stray from the herd, for the foggy gray wastes of the outsider. We will burn a bright fire with our virtuous actions so that others will not lose their way. And to those who choose to wander beyond the walls of our homes in far places, we will strike at them swiftly before they whisper to their neighbors, filling their hearts with strangeness and doubt. Okay, well, he seems like a cheerful chap. We were in here earlier, that's good. Let's go in here. Oh, more, more reading. Let's close that. A gaffer's tale. I, I'm not reading this, this is very long. Hang on. Pause if you want to read it. Finding my way to the feeble light of the dying fire, I saw her working. A large needle moved in her hand, following precise esoteric patterns. Knots and loops of seamstress craft from ancient days. Beneath her needle, his body clenched and shuddered, shaking the wooden table. A morbid fascination pushed me closer, until she turned her blank face toward me, resting the needle in his flesh. With a refined tone, she addressed me. So you are the lover, I presume. You too have been unfaithful, and now it is your turn to be mended. Don't like that. Lord Nathan Bale, shaking with outrage. 
How dare you, sir, clothed in so in my very home. I should hand you over to the watch to pray, Divian. Prince Kalasar, moving closer. That is a harsh welcome for royalty, my lord. Your daughter treated me with much more hospitality. Alas, she has all gone out for the evening, leaving me all alone. What are you doing? Leave this house. Back to your frozen wasteland, pale rascal. No need for anger between us, Lord Bale. Is it so wrong for me to be here? As I've proven, I've developed an affinity for you and your family. Oh my, Karasar. Your skin is so warm, it, it burns. That's smut. That is a smutty book. Look away, children, and read it not, lest ye Attention, be corrupted by the smut. The old That's a two-way swinging door. That's good to know. Further up the stairs is probably where our... Uh, thing was because we were we were quite high up. Ah, uh, <laughs> just a bricked off wall. Who are you? Cecilia. The Admiral served in the Navy under the Empress. But something happened with the Lord Regent that drove the Admiral out. If I understand it right. Cecilia, you're breaking my heart. You're shaking my confidence. Okay, well, you don't seem into it, so I'm not going to keep pushing it. Uh, are you coming to my room, Cecilia? Because this is where I live. I don't know if you live here too, but if you live here too, we should discuss boundaries. Because one half of this room is mine, okay? Or are you the one that's just leaving coin around for me to find? Because if you are, I'm into it. Um, yeah, this is definitely the room that I found earlier. Posters for everyone! Great, love it. Anyway, let's go and meet Piero. Are we all staying up here? Do you all live in my room? Is that what's happening? Is it because they bricked off the third floor? Can I find my way onto the third floor? There must be a way. But in the meantime... Ah! Piero! Oh. I'll be crafting your weapons and gear. All custom work. For you, I will create the tools of a master assassin. Yeah, I'm going for a non-lethal run, though. Could you... A master sleep assassin? No! This cannot happen now. The tank of whale oil is running. Will you get a new tank from upstairs, please, while I hold this in place? Be careful. Okay. Unstable. Oh, da, da, da. It, it is through no fault of my own that the average citizen has expressed Piero. It is through no fault of my own that the average citizen has expressed a preference for Sokolov's elixir over my own formula, sold as Piero's remedy. A name I did not choose, if you must know the truth. The public has spoken its usual message of idiocy, spending their coin as a means of selecting Sokolov's formula over mine, which I believe to be equal, if not superior. Much has been made over the popularity of these concoctions as a means of resisting this remarkable new plague. I say remarkable, because this strain works with an efficiency we have not seen in the history of the Empire. This plague now making its way through the city of Dunwall is unrivaled in its effectiveness. I have studied it within the blood of those so afflicted, and it's nearly perfect. Elegant, in fact. Creepy, dude. And while it is true that Piero's remedy and Sokolov's elixir are known to protect the body against the plague equally, my own has properties not fully understood, which relates to the mind itself and the spirit, and in this way that way that in in this way that my formula wins out. Here is where one should pay attention to this contest. For you see, Sokolov's elixir, with its emphasis on the brute animal body, is a cross go a cross goo, a crass goo, better suited for livestock. The subtle and secret variance in the key ingredients making up Piero's remedy ensure that it works on the higher functions that separate mankind from the mindless blue-jawed hagfish swimming in the Renhaven River. When it explodes... Piero, no, I will not sign off on these purchases. A bag of powdered crystal, Tivian ore, what's with the metals... What's wrong with the metals in crystal? King Sparrow feathers. If you do feathers, sacrifice your own pillow. Maybe at the Academy, everything you needed was paid for by tariff and handed out willy-nilly, but this is my bar, or what's left of it, and we're operating on a budget. We're running low on oil, food, elixir, building materials, and everything else, so you've got to slow down. While I'm footing the bill, I will not approve your purchases unless they're absolutely required. No more copper wire for spe or special herbs. If you need those things, go out and scavenge them. Half the city is in ruins, so no one's going to miss any of the odd any of the odd crap you seem to need. Terrible news. 
I found some medicinal herbs for you. They they were on your shelf. I'm not gonna lie to you, but the star chart. Ooh. Vices. All right, sorry, I'm 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 getting you a thing. Hang on, let me just that take this. That one is empty. A new tank. Yeah, I'm getting you a new tank. I'm just taking this tank up for the. Per oh, hang on. Is it there? Oh, I'll just pop it out. Hang on. Coins. There's stuff to take. I'll be with you in a minute, Fiera. I'm I'm, I'm very busy raiding whatever you have going on up here. No, nope. okay. Remarkably, each specimen I had the pleasure of studying during the voyage possessed some minor variants in physiology. On the second leg of the trip east of Tibia, the crew hauled aboard a female, some 42 inches in length, uh, or feet in length, rather. I estimate she weighed 35 tons, and the ship sat low, rocking side to side through the night with her thrashing. By candlelight, I took her apart, sketching and taking notes. Against her bellowing, I cut into the mass of tentacles around her mouth. Within, I found row upon row of teeth and barley baleen running along the upper jaw. Through this broom-like structure, I assumed she filtered food from the water that was too small to be chewed. Gross. Ebenezer Greaves. Out at sea, they secured the beasts with hooks, with lines cast from the main ship and from several smaller boats. Boys keep the whale from diving deep. Once it's caught, a larger hook is driven through the tail, which is used to hoist the creature up through the chute. They man, they moan and bellow for some time as the men get them onto the deck, then lift them into the scaffolding overhead. The ship adjusts its prow and returns to port in Dunwall where the crew works on the great creature, slicing off the fattiest parts while it still lives. Gross. Sokolov no longer has the upper hand with regards to supplies of whale oil. The good admiral has paid for the institution installation of my own system, which will enable me to work in this place. The oil tank dispenser, when activated, will produce an empty vessel for filling. When the tank is em empty tank is held near the oil tank refill pump, the magnetic attractor should take the tank and lock it in the correct configuration. Using the lever will begin the refilling process. Once refilling is completed, the tank can be removed and placed in service. Extreme caution must be used in handling the full tanks. They are quite unstable. The system is sound and well engineered. It appears that the Greaves Oil Company has done something correctly for once. I mean, Pierre is very a man of, of, of great, uh, uh, like preciseness, precision is the word I'm looking for. Perfect. Now plug it in. It's plugged in, Pierre. Perfect. Thank you, Cole. You're welcome, my friend. Here I didn't read see? all of your journals and things. The assassin's mask. Oh, okay. You're a wanted man, so everyone in the city knows your face. This mask will mean terror to them. If you it's just creepy. hold still, the fit must be precise. Uh, I there. don't want it, thank you. Can you see normally? Nope. Send the lens out of the line. It's like a fisheye lens going there. on here. Better now? Nope. I could create more for you. Do I have to Upgrades do with this the entire for game? Your gear, weapons, munitions. But our situation here is desperate. Scavenge the city go. for valuables, and I will resell them on the black market. That should give us the money to craft the things. What if I need. sell things that I found in your room? Tell me Does what matter? I can make. Oh, uh, yeah, let's have a look. Okay, cool. Sleep bolts. I need those. Do I have any of those upgrades? Crossbow accuracy, crossbow range. This is reload. Excellent. Combat sleep dart. Sleep dart's sedative effect is immediate, even in combat. Need sword crossing really so much. Uh, mask optics is good. Bolt capacity is good. That should be actually I should definitely get that. Um, uh, mask optics allows you to magnify your view. Let's get that straight away. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, let's buy some sleep darts. How many do I have? of those. Um, bolt capacity is 300. What have I got? I've got enough for a 400 one and a 300 one. Um, uh, reload. Crossbow range is actually probably 
Could I get both? Do we? No, not quite both. Combat Sleep Dart is also very good. Um, uh, let's. The hope is I don't get into combat, right? So let's let's go with crossbow accuracy and bolt capacity. And then we can buy some more. Oh, that's for the regular bolts? Ah, dang it, I wouldn't have done it if I'd known. Oh well, well, we live and learn. Thank you. You must be exhausted. I advise that you get some sleep. I would because you this mask on my face. Difficult. Can I ever take it off? You should rest while you can. Okay. Um, I'd like to look around while the forest. Very well. You know best. Let me know if you need anything more. I will. Don't you worry about a thing. You'll be the first to know about anything that I think I need. This is the hub area, right? I'm just gonna come back here. Yeah, no, let's just go to bed and we'll, uh, but let's take the fun. Ooh, ooh. Sam, do you sleep in here, Samuel? I once served under Admiral Havelock. Dude, there's Captain so many Havelock rooms. Then. Come, come stay in I here. don't know if he remembers me, but I fear it's rude to ask. I don't want to embarrass him. Don't sleep under a boat. Sam, come on. Come on, there's rooms everywhere. There's loads of rooms. I fell off, but it's okay, I meant to do that. Just leaving all these doors River open. traffic is forbidden from landing in the distillery district due to risk Aha. of infectious contact. There's more areas. Violators here. will be taken to the flooded district for treatment and rehabilitation. Again, sounds like a murder you're talking about. It sounds like you're talking about doing a murder to people who are in need of rehabilitation. Like, all dystopian futures talk about rehabilitation like that, so... Certainly sounds like you're doing a murder. Anything fun in here? King Sparrow Feathers! I like that they... I, uh, like, as a man who likes a good crafting uh, skill, I do like that they made it so that you can... That you don't have to collect like the individual things that need that you need for the, the crafting you just need to collect them in general and then they get sold you get money and then you use the money for crafting Do not i'm okay with it i'm not gonna read all those blood from the eyes boom The stuff and things and stuff. Really was hoping for more stuff and things. Well, that's frustrating. Anything in here? Uh, no. Oh, but there's like a whole other area. Oh, the area goes down here. Okay, this. I rem don't remember any of this. I'm not gonna lie to you. But this is very cool. To be like so open in the hub area. Also, I like the feet. Like, it's very rudimentary parkour stuff. Because, like, games came later on, such as the um, uh, Mirror's Edge and stuff like that, where the parkour became, you know, just unbelievably good. But it does. F it feels parkour y. Attention like you're climbing system. up and over something. Be advised, the river which is nice. Is the man dangerous? Yes, very much so, but no need to fear. He is here to work with our masters. People say he killed the Empress. Of course he didn't. People are foolish and believe whatever they're told. Okay. Yes, yeah, Cecilia. If the Admiral trusts him, then so will I. Uh, I'll keep an eye on you, Cecilia, as I awkwardly lean back away. <laughs> 
If we're going to be sharing a room, Cecilia, I need you to be more chill than you're being. Don't shut my door. I'll shut my door. Wait, what's out here? There's more? There's more stuff and things? What? I love it. Oh, what's this? I don't remember this. There's books and magazines and a creepy doll place. Hang on, let's start with this one. The Fugue Feast. At the end of every year, after the last day of the month of the songs, we begin the Fugue Feast. The new year has not started, and thus time that follows is outside the calendar. A period of celebration and feasting begins, during which the people abandon the very practices that will keep them whole or healthy over the year. Like the Purge! Many leave their homes euphoric with spirits of potent herbs. Some paint their faces or wear masks to conceal themselves as they pursue their passions without reservation. Oh, it's like the Sex Purge! I hated that sentence that I said. Oh. When the right cosmological signs are observed, and it is time for the calendars to begin anew, the sitting high overseer calls for the hymn of atonement and the fugue feast ends. Families return to their homes, wives to their husbands, enemies put down their weapons, and fires are extinguished. Oh, no, it's just like the purge. Okay, cool. No complaint is given for those who have wronged others, deviated from ancient codes, or discarded oaths. For this time, during the astrological alignment, does not exist and is not recorded. The following day starts a new year marked on the first of the month of Earth, as it has always been. Did this come before the Purge did? Because that's the Purge. We've, we've read that one. My stomach twisted as the engines of the odd vessel roared louder. It was a creation of Orcado, third prefect from the Academy of Natural Philosophy. He was exhilarated. Uh, savoring each of the small craft's undulations. Good word. Ocado pulled the lever, and a great gout of smoke surrounded us. The smell of burning whale oil grew unbearable as the machine propelled itself upward. I was too afraid to look through the window, which suddenly didn't feel thick enough. As if knowing my thoughts, Overseer Bryn looked at me and smiled. Recite some of the litany, my pupil. It will protect your heart from the turpitude of the... Another good word. Of the void on our way to the outer spheres. Ooh, all right, well... This was cool. It's cool that there's stuff around. Anything in the bush? Nothing in the bush. I didn't know about this place either. I don't think I explored much when I played this last. I think I just kind of went with the missions. Yeah, nothing in the bush. All right. Up, up, uh, just going back to sleep. Yeah. Did this? When did this game? I need to look at when this game came out and when the purge came out. Because I think did they steal the purge from this, or did this steal that from the purge? I'll go to sleep now. Somewhere else. That's not somewhere else at all. It's the same place. I was just here. Oh, uh, hello. Ah, uh, there was definitely a door there earlier. Did you brick me in while I was asleep? Hello? Oh no, we're we're somewhere else. Ha! Huh. Cool. All right. Well, this is um, this is new. Strange gravity in that direction. I think there's strange gravity everywhere. I hate to tell you. Oh. Hello, Corva. Hello. Your life has taken a turn, has it not? It's got weird. I'm not the gonna Empress lie. The Empress is dead. Her precious daughter Emily is lost somewhere in the city, Which and you will play a pivotal done, role in the days to come. For this, I have chosen you and drawn you into the void. Ah, nice. Thanks. I am the outsider, and this is my mark. There are forces ah! in the world and beyond the world, great forces that we can call magic. I don't recall asking and for now, attention. these forces will serve your will. Use this newfound power. My gift to you. Cheers. Come find me. Maybe. I, I don't think... I don't think we talked about... Faster selfie forward dash through the world. Blinking! You can use it to move upward, but the distance is reduced. Aiming at legends will allow you to blink forward and climb up. Hold uh, left trigger to target your destination with precision. A blue sphere indicates... The okay. Oh, that's cool. I do remember blinking. Oh. 
Uh, I'm not going to read that. You can see what it says. I mean, no, I can't. She's already dead. Ooh, Pietro's spiritual remedy. That's what he was talking about. So he created the mana potion. Uh... Corvo, I'm very sad. They say you're dead like mother, but I'm going to put this note in a bottle and throw it into the river, because I do not believe them. Living here is very strange. I do not like it, so please come for me if you can. I'm, I'm, I'm on my way, Emily. On my way. Who are these two? They're twins, Basil. Twins. Is there something behind here? No. Maybe, maybe. There is not. Okay. Well, so she's with twins, who have a creepy wall on a face on their wall. Okay. Well, that's good to know. It's good information to have. Thank you, outsider. You weird dude. Up, up. And there's the dude who did the deed. You are a naughty, naughty man. Stop playing with your toys and admit to your crimes. Up, up. Not doing very well. Oh! Uh, what? What is this? Leggy shooters. Oh yes, the leggy shooters. Don't think that's what they're called, but they are leggy shooters. That's unfortunate. We don't like the leggy shooters up here. Oh. Not doing what you're doing because that feels like a oh. In the days that follow, your trials will be great, Corvo. Good, I love it. Oh, I trust it's gonna Seek be great. The ancient runes bearing my mark in the lonely places of your world and at shrines raised in my name. Okay, these runes will grant you powers beyond those of other men. I think already I've got to those. help you find these runes. I give you this the heart of a living thing. Molded by my hands. Ha! Huh. With this heart, you will Thanks. hear many secrets, and it will guide you toward my runes, no matter how they may be hidden. Hey. Listen to the heart now, and find another rune. Uh, oh, I don't want it though. Thanks though. Just gonna take this. Uh... Yep. This place is the end of all things. Oh, the heart is talking to me. That's good. All of time is meaningless here. Not seconds, nor centuries. Someday this place will devour all the lights in the sky. That sounds The one who walks here is all things. Cradle songs of comfort and all is not empty. This is the place from which those who dabble in the black arts draw their power. This place is their doom. I can feel the great age ending. This place is the end of all things. And the beginning. All of time is meaningless. Oh, we just loop, we loop it. Cool. Neither seconds, nor centuries. Oh no! No! Ah! Meant to do that. <laughs> I sounded like Corvo, didn't I? The big terrifying assassin man. <laughs> no! Ah! Oh, oh, okay. 
exchange them for powers. Okay. So I've got blink. And I can get blink level two. Dark vision. See in the dark and see living things through the walls, including their fields of vision. That's very helpful. What's this one? Health is increased. Health regener regeneration is improved. That's also very cool. Um, blood's thirsty. Build up adrenaline. Then trigger beautiful. No, that's alright. Jump height is increased and falling damage is reduced. Agility, very useful. Shadow kill. I think I'm going to do that. So, Bend time, also helpful. Possession, sounds horrendous. I'm going to take some dark vision. Cool. Uh, and then I'll take agility next, I think. How you use what I have Hello. given you falls upon you, okay. as it has to the others before you. Others? Oh, and now okay. I return you special, to your but world. Guess I'm not. All right. But know that I will be watching with great interest. I don't like that you gave me a heart, dude. Hidden in an old bar on the river, your new allies have plans to share with you. Meet the loyalists in a circle <clears throat> to learn what they've got in mind. There we go. That was what I should have read earlier. If I open that door and gravity's all wonky again, I'm going to be very annoyed. What is this? Uh, hello, Mr. Whale artifact. Uh, three small supernatural look at them by. This seems for the song they made by default. You can activate three bone charms at once. The Journal of Granny Rags. Of course, I'll tell you, dearie. I won't keep any secrets from you in the end. All the dreary days of my life are like the windows of a house from the kitchen. I can see out into the garden where the leaves and stalks are brown and bug eaten. You can see a little lump of dirt where something is wrapped in a blanket and laid to rest along the rows of twisting vines. The front room looks out onto the street where the neighbors are all sitting fire to their homes, barricading themselves inside. Warm and snug, dearie. Weird. Don't forget about the bedroom either. Either. It sets into a dreary alley where hooligans are playing a game with an old man. The first two are hitting him with sticks and the girl with them is kicking at his dry old ribs. Oh, <laughs> to have those bones, to boil them in a pot. Granny Rags is weird. No one lives in my house anymore, dearie. No one you'd want to meet. When I lived there with my husband, we were fine, fine people. Vera Moray, everyone would say, your house is as grand as Boyle Manor. Better even, your dinners are lavish, and your parties are the best. When that young Sokolov came to paint my portrait, I was nearly still in my prime. Radiant, he said, and he was just barely a man, so young. Painting was all the best across the land. Everyone wanted a portrait by his hand, all my friends. I was the only one, dearie, wet with his paint, glistening on the canvas for a pretty coin. But it wasn't all parties and paintings. My husband and I weren't always at home, no. We traveled together, he and I, to the far ends of the isles, beyond even, all the way to the red cliffs of Pandicia, to dig in the rock and crawl through the caves, holding up candles and squinting at the walls. Many precious things we came upon, but no, so, none so precious as the boy with the black eyes, dearie. That'll be the outsider. All those marks and bones, carved so deep and polished so bright. I brought the old bones home, hid them from my dear husband, then I learned to boil them and carve them myself. They made such good presents, dearie. The little mute boy took them home. He loved them so. All the time he came back with the new bones for me, holding them up so I could see it in his eyes. Even though his tongue was still, Granny, his eyes would say to me, Carve these bones for me. Make me another present. And he went so far, so far, all the way to Dunwall Tower. The royal headsman himself now, my little mute boy and his shiny, shiny sword. Ah, okay, maybe not the outsider. Better bones were what I needed, you see. Better bones to carve and polish, scrape and gleam. My dear old husband was always tired. I made him soup, and then he was sick. Better bones was all, for my little mute boy carved in the name of the one with black eyes. And after my husband was gone, given away his birthday gifts, I didn't want to live there anymore. So now I'm old and don't have many 
to gift my presents to. It's sifting through the garbage for granny rags and feeding the little birdies that gather at my feet. No one wants to have tea, dearie, especially those rude louts on Bottle Street, Slack Jaw and his boys, always meddling with an old woman just trying to make her way. In the end, we'll be together with him, you and me in the dreary night, with stars above and below, and always the one with the black eyes, dearie. Oh, did you leave me a thing? Is that what happened here? Uh, the heart is doing something. Somewhere in the basements below, Hound kills Hound. The money changes hands. Super Wolf Hound artifact. What is this? You want a chin wag on Slack Jaw? What he was like when he was young, before he got his name. Oh, he's a cool head now, but we weren't always like that in the days before he was boss of Bottle Street Gang. Time was, young Slack Jaw wasn't such a reasonable man. Like most of us, he grew up on the streets, running with a pack of ragamuffins, avoiding the low law, pinching whatever he needed. Dark haired, dark eyed, smoking a pipe by the age of ten. For them born in the brothels or coming from the orphanage, it was either the gangs or working with the mudlarks, and no one watched that. Some got pressed into the navy or put down in the mines run by the Pendleton or Boyle families. As hard as it was on the streets, as hungry as we all got, at least we was free. By the time we weren't little ones anymore, Slackjaw was one to watch. Usually calling the shots when we took down a farmer's car or sidewalk street vendor. He'd come up with a plan, give everyone some part to play and decide on the split. Most of us we just went along, because we learned fast that we made out better like that. More food, more coin, plus none of us wanted to deal with Slackjaw when he was in a rage. We worked on a couple of big jobs with Slack Black Sally across town, and that was enough to get the attention of the other bosses. He wasn't just a street kid anymore, now he was an up-and-comer, which meant trouble. My, another guy who fancied himself as such was Mike the Fish. What a terrible name, Mike the Fish. Who was working his way up, running the protection racket among the furry factory women. One fine evening, we were all taking an baldy show in the theatre house. Mike the Fish and his lot are there in the cheap seats too, just down the aisles from us. Mike gets a wild idea. He wasn't big on planning, and throws a heavy ceramic spittoon at Slackjaw. It's him square in the face and breaks his jaw. We look to see if there's going to be a blood brawl, but Slackjaw just points to the door, and we all leave, with Mike laughing at our backs. Waking up the next day, without telling us why, Slackjaw motions for us all to follow. He still can't say a word, so we just come along. We stop at the docks, and Slackjaw buys, actually pays coin for it, a heavy chain covered in hooks. It's for fishing in the deep, something you'd attach to a long line off the side of a ship. It's about four feet made of thick links, and there are shark hooks coming off it. At different angles, Slackjaw's got that thing wrapped around his left arm, dangling at his side. Not sure how we knew where Mike the Fish was staying, but when we reached his girl's house, Slackjaw throws a bottle through the window, just like that. It's almost known there's a bunch of screaming inside, and Mike pokes his head out, looking wide-eyed and baffled. When he sees Slackjaw around the street, a look comes over his face that still gives me the willies. Pure murder. Mike comes out the side door, bellowing like a blood ox, holding a cleaver, heading straight for Slackjaw. When they come together in the street, Slackjaw spins and the shark hooks bite deep into Mark's arm and shoulder. He screams, but Slackjaw rolls onto the chain. He's standing there with his jaw broken, clenched tight, with a chain wrapped around his left arm, hooks sunk into Mike the fish, just knifing him as fast as he can. Mike couldn't fight very well, looked like that, and using his left hand, but he was a big guy, and it took a lot of stabbing before he went to his knees. Everyone was cheering at first, but then it all went quiet. Just kept going and going until it was just Mike the fish blubbering, crying like a baby in the sound of Slackjaw's knife. When it was over, and here's the brilliant part, Slackjaw took out a note and stuck to Mike's face with a nail. It just said, if you want a job, come to Bottle Street. Slackjaw didn't talk right for a couple of months, but word spread fast. By the end of the year, once we had a sizable gang going, he sent out the letters to the other bosses, telling them that he was running a brand new crew over on Bottle Street. Most of them laughed or beat up the guys who delivered the letters. Green Eye Trish even came back a missing thumb. But apparently Slack Jaw was expecting that kind of reaction and had a backup plan. A week later, four of the bosses were dead. It seemed like a series of unfortunate events, but everyone knew better. One shot dead by the watch while standing in the middle of a meat market, and I was slipping and falling into the water out cold. One of the older bosses found him in bed with his belly open wide and a Tivian pear stuffed into his mouth. Still not sure what that meant. And Sheila Barnsworth was found bubbling in a cauldron of hot wax. Slackjaw sent out another set of letters, offers to the underbosses, telling them they'd be treated fair as peers. He even sent Green Eyed Trish with one of the letters. All of the underbosses accepted. Under spilling the guts of his main after spilling the guts of his main competition, Slackjaw went for stabilising his business, real neat like. 
calling in favours, smoothing things over, giving everyone a little bit of coin or drink as a bonus, showing what he could be like as a boss, so everything got quiet, which always makes the boys of the City Watch nervous, of course. <laughs> Word went out among the Royal Spymaster's snitches, the responsible citizens group they called themselves, telling everyone working in a shop or sweeping off the front steps of their homes to keep watchful eyes for Slackjaw and his men, trying to suss out what they were up to and what had just happened, but Slackjaw ain't stupid. He creased a few palms among the shopkeepers and the watch too. Tell him that he was in town to stay. And he thinks he'll be run properly from now on without so much blood. Blood, 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 blood apparently. He was finally a real boss, ready to settle into the business of moving whiskey, running the hand fights and offering up the ladies and gentlemen of the night if you take my meaning. Then the plague came. At first it seemed like a good thing. A few people got sick and everyone wanted to buy those potions from Sokolov or Piero. Elf elixir or spiritual remedy they call them. Stackjaw told me he saw an opportunity. We already had an old whiskey factory with a still where we could water the stuff down to sell it discounted. Doing the same with the Sokolov's elixir was a smart plan. Pretty soon everybody in the slums was sick and business was good. But after a while, there were so many people down with the plague that everyone got scared. Everyone started acting real nasty and everything fell apart. And people can't work, they don't have a coin for elixir, water down or pure. Then the Empress died, and it seemed like Dunwall would slide into the void. Spymaster Burroughs took over, and the Watch started using all that new Sokolov technology. Watchtowers, Tallboys, which is the name of the leggy shooters, uh, and Arc Pylons. They put up a wall of light across Clavering Boulevard and cracked down hard. But Slackjaw surprised us again. Instead of leaving town on a boat bound for Morley or one of the other isles, he stayed and kept it all together. We get as much elixir to fight off the plague as the City Watch with their taxes and rations. And that's kept us alive so far. So I am reading things. Uh, obviously, I, I talked about the fact that I wasn't going to read uh, all of them. But I'm, I'm trying to read as much of them as possible because it's fun to have more. Things like that. Um, these ones are quite long. I apologise. If you want to skip ahead, skip ahead! Okay, these are very long, though. Um... For every year now, I've lived. Uh, for every year now, I've lived away from the Abbey, without the company of my overseer, brethren, or the guidance of the blind sisters of the Oracular Order. Days have passed with me, sleeping in the dens of cut purses, murderers, and worse. And the nights have to see me prowling through the worst alleys and wretched corners of Dunwall. I have taken my meals with killers. At times, I have ventured beyond the city walls, meeting in forgotten graveyards and the outlying ruins frequented by those of, those of ill means. My beard has grown long, and I wear the weathered clothing and bits of boiled leather favoured by the Bottle Street and Hatter gangs, and by those rough men and women who make their trade knifing others in return for coin. My hands have run red with blood, it's true, but I have selected my targets with care, choosing among those criminals and heretics who are not fit to live, executing them justly, and using their deaths as a means of building my reputation. So far, this trick has allowed me to make my name among my murderous colleagues without taking the lives of the innocent. My goal is singular. I must impress the assassin named Dowd in order to get close to him. Of all the practitioners of black magic we have tracked, none concern the Abbey as much as Dowd. It is said that his mother was a witch from one of the archipelagos off the Pandician coast, taken captive by pirates venturing far from the Isles. According to the legend, by the time the ship returned, the captain was dead and the witch controlled the crew, with Dowd still a shadow in her belly. The earliest stories tell of a gang killer without mercy, moving among the shopkeepers and city watch officers of Dunwall like a reaper through wheat. When a period of silence followed years, we now believe he spent travelling the Isles, studying anatomy of the occult in the great halls of learning in hidden basements, frequented by fellow dabblers in the forbidden arts. Dowd is even purported to have spent a winter in the Academy of Natural Philosophy itself, and for a time, before a schism developed, he counted the Bridgemore Witches among his allies. All the while, he honed his craft, and it's during this time that we believe he began to consort with the outsider. New reports emerged of a dusky-skinned assassin paid by the elite to eliminate their rivals in Dunwall, and in the other major cities across the Isles. Those who saw him and lived numbered in the handful, but all of them reported something strange. He appeared and vanished like smoke. From a nearby rooftop, he gestured and noble woman stumbled from her balcony, falling to her doom on the cobblestones below. Most re recently, as this new threat of plague has risen in Dunwall, Dowd has been seen leading a gang of men in dark leather, dressed as factory whalers with their vapour masks. That sounds like the people that kill the Empress. They seem loyal, but beyond comprehension for one so unworthy, leading to wonder if some of his magic is dedicated to lulling the minds, enslaving them. Only a month ago, one young girl claims to have come upon a strange scene, carrying a bottle of milk home to her crippled brother. She was taking a shortcut through the tailor's district. In a narrow street, she passed beneath a window and heard unusual sounds from within. 
Pushing outside the ratty, pushing aside the ratty curtain, the girl saw into an abandoned apartment used by miscreants for gambling and trading haberweed. The, an occult shrine had been erected against the far wall, which she recognized from the teachings given by her local overseer. A man she described as resembling Dodd was kneeling before a shrine, muttering to an unseen spirit as if in argument. He took a carving made of pale bone from the altar before him, and the lights all went out in a gush of unclean wind. Quiet as a field mouse, she slipped away, running until she reached her home. There can be no doubt. Doubt as an agent of the outsiders and must die. For there is no limit to the evil this man might do. This is my solemn oath and with great purpose, the great purpose of my life. Until doubt is dead and his corruption has been purged from the world, I will continue to move among the depraved, winding my way toward him. I will not drop my guise nor don my overseer's mask again until doubt breathes no more. That sounds like the group of people that murdered the, uh, the, the, uh, Empress. Okay, this is the last one I think that's in here. Thank you for bearing with me. As the fourth day, month, month of um, <clears throat> month of high cold, progress continues on the suppression of gang activity in the distillery district. But more slowly than I'd expected. The ruffians operating there have been cunning. I'll grant them that. But it's only a matter of time. I'll see their leaders flogged in public and sent beneath the royal executioner's blade. If I have my way, that meat bastard will be working all night and day, removing the heads that need removing. Internally, the Empress does not seem pleased with my investigations. It seems that it's beyond her thinking, against her very nature as a trusting person to believe the traitors move amongst us. But I know they do. They must. No, Jessamine would rather spend her time with the royal protector. At least she's likely to stop any immediate threat to her safety. But a strong arm is not what's needed against those who would undermine us. How will Corvo's sword stop a poisoned wine glass or an explosive delivered by courier? It will not. There are many threats around us. Threats requiring meticulous efforts to police. Young Lady Emily is undisciplined, I'm afraid. Here within Dumbwell Tower, she receives instruction from the finest tutors known in the Isles. Yet her mother spoils her and spends most of her time lost in imagination, wasting her time drawing or asking Corvo to teach her to fight with wooden sticks. The girl might rule the Empire someday. Every moment spent as a play is a moment wasted. Shoring up security for the main gate leading to Dumbwell Tower has been another pet project of late. To think that back in the day, Emperor Caldwin left it open to the public during the day, <laughs> allowing anyone to come and go as they pleased. If it were up to me, I'd seal off access to the streets entirely, but the Empress won't hear of it. The water lock is much easier to protect, and if it were the only way into the tower, traffic in and out would be greatly reduced. Someday the wrong person is going to slip in and we'll all suffer for it. Mark my words, no amount of security is excessive, when it comes to protecting the heads of state. Oh, this is here in Barrows. Oh, never mind. The Empress also disappears. This approves of my plan for the Sokolov devices. I can't remember what his voice was anyway. Uh, Sokolov himself has no interest in security, of course, but he's vain and therefore keen to see his inventions deployed in my, any fashion. This wall of light he's been tinkering with has promise. In any case, at least I was able to convince the Empress to upgrade the pistols carried by the officers of the watch. Why do I worry so when no one else seems to care? If I ever fall asleep, what are those sinkings in the ocean? Will the rough things clamber over the walls and fill themselves on our flesh? This is what I see in the same dream several times each month. If only I had more say in things, more authority, I could protect us all. Perhaps I've been working too hard. Dinner and an evening of conversation with a certain lady of refinement might be in order. Perhaps somewhere in nice in the estate district. So that's here in Burroughs. That's the, uh, that's the bad guy that uh, caused all the things. I don't know what all these things are, but they're very cool. It's nice to have them. Um, I don't know what to do with these bone charms. It's said to go here, right? Bone charms. Oh, ooh. Oh, oh. Swim speed increase. Enemies miss more often. For a moderate keyhole peeping magnification. Good lungs. Breaking glass sound is moderately reduced. Fencer. Damage from explosions reduced slightly. Shot whiskey bottles explode with greater intensity. Power effects slightly improved. White rats can be consumed for mana. White rats would attack you. Let's take that, because being not attacked in general is nice. Power effects slightly improved. Let's take that. Blast resistant. That's great. Um, breaking sound is moderately reduced. Magnification. Quick dodge. And swim... Uh, let's go with... Good luck. These are all very cool. I don't know how we got so many so early on. If you like but he won't use it. Why? He can't sleep in regular beds anymore. Well, that's what he says. He says he was in the Navy too long. Can you believe it? Oh, that pile of wood out there? It's a hopper we built. Oh, in Samuel. Robot. Where does Admiral Havelock find these people, I wonder? Such laughter, and then they sing old 
This way. Um, I didn't realize I could swim. I mean, I knew I could swim, but I didn't realize I could swim in this area. It's good to know. Um, yeah, I'll take it. Let's uh, let's get that agility we were talking about. Oh, it costs two runes. Um, well, we'll just hold off. We'll hold off because we don't necessarily need vitality because the idea is to not get hit. They tar off the line with river water, but eventually, eventually someone swoons. Was I being attacked by a fish? And their are fetched from the cells. I was being attacked by a fish. Thought it was. Their fate rests on your effort, on the strength of your hands. And your heart. It's funny because you're a heart and you're talking to me and I'm concerned about that, but that's fine, we'll deal with that. I am being attacked by fish. I'm being badly attacked by fish. Go away, fish. Just leave me be. They stood in a circle around the candles and cut their hands to form their lines. The blood hissed and seeped as it touched the flames. The, the conspirators have found a safe home here. They take great care of their own Well, Let's get down to it. Yes. First off, I know that assassination is dark business. It, it is. Sometimes, good men have to do bad things to make the world. Our mm. purpose is clear. We want to restore Her Majesty's line by finding and putting Emily Caldwin on the throne. Oh, we got so, so much more ends, money now as well. well what was that? Is that part of a DLC or something? Take them apart, piece by piece. Okay. Tonight, Talk to me. High Overseer Camel dies by your hand. It won't be easy. He's protected by his overseers, an it's army of There's no need for ways to do it, though, But if they? anyone can do it, you can. Your exploits are remember. legendary. Campbell carries a private journal. Once you've eliminated him, get the journal. Because we think it contains Emily's location. I think she's with twins because her of a creepy dream I had, so... Assuming she's alive. That's the gist of it. Remember our cause and strike true. We're counting on you. I got you, pal. Don't you worry Another about a thing. Campbell is holding a former overseer by the name of Martin. He's one of us, and if you manage to find him, give him whatever help you can. He's a master strategist, and he got caught working for our cause. It'd be good to have him back here at the Hound Base. I got you, pal. What's this? Oh, gosh. What you've read here is the truth regardless of what you will hear from the authorities who rule over us. It is not a matter of coincidence that the former royal spy master is the one who stepped into the late empress's after, when the late empress fell. We who will remain nameless believe that these events are interconnected. The signs of oppression are all around us. The Sokolov designs, originally intended to provide light and warmth in our homes, have been turned against us as a means of inspiring fear and controlling our movements through the city. And where did this plague originate? Some say it was imported. A wild theory, perhaps? One of our members risked her life to obtain internal report from the government, which we'll be printing and sharing soon, called the Exquisite Tallboy, extolling the virtues of this newest member of the City Watch. To those in the streets below, these virtues are horrors. Spread by stilted thugs who rain down fire on the sick and the poor. To these eyes, the tall boy is another government bully. Armed with incendiary devices, thickly armoured and standing high overhead, looking down at the common people of the city. We know, now know that the tall boys are heavily drugged, imbibing a substance that renders them quite resistant to pain, but also dulls whatever empathy they might normally possess. Exquisite? We think not. Copy these words and share them with your neighbours. And remember... When the tides are lowest, the truth will be revealed. Cool. Like a little manifesto situation. Um, hey, Pietro. Oh, Corvo, if you've a moment. Who, who's that? Who's talking to me? What? Where? Who? Corvo, there's something I need to say to you. Oh, hey! Lydia. Corvo. No, Hello. Callista. I'm Callista. I, Lydia. I work here for Admiral Havelock. I'm sorry to intrude on your business, but this is important. Corvo, Lydia. I suspect you're going to kill the High Overseer, that wretched man. Yeah. Well, There's really no reason to. for you to listen to me, but my uncle, 
Jeff Kernow still serves as captain in the City Watch. I know Jeff from before. But he's a good man and my only family. The chatter in servant circles is that Campbell just took delivery of an exotic poison. And I think I know why. My uncle's not corruptible like the rest of them. Campbell is going to poison my uncle. Oh. Do you think you could protect him? You used to do that, right? Before you had that your cuts weirdly deep. Yes. Before you became an assassin. Okay, I just became an assassin. All right, like literally, just became an assassin. So let's not be. I overheard judging. the admiral at breakfast talking about the overseers. That's all I heard. Okay. And I think it's better if I don't know too much about the people who do. That's good. Cool. He's my uncle, and he means a lot to me. His name is Jeff Kernow. Captain Jeff Kernow. Gotcha. Callista, Callista, whatever that is. I am uneasy pursuing avenues that emanate from my dreaming mind. I would be too. You traveled with my uncle briefly, didn't you? Yes, I did. Look, I'm going to help your uncle if I can, I promise. What can I do for you? I would like to purchase upgrades and new equipment, please, because I now have 2,209 coins. A lot of coins. Let's upgrade some stuff then. Let's do it. Combat sleep belt. Let's get let's get that right in there. Boom. Uh, let's go for crossbow range and crossbow reload. Um, let's get another bone charm, because why wouldn't we? Yeah, alright. Cool. Oh, we can... Oh, we could have bought more runes. Oh, well, I'm an idiot. Never mind. <laughs> I need to pay attention to things before I just start blindly doing stuff. Um, but we now have the ability to get another bone charm. So let's get... Um, let's get the one that lets us swim faster. That was a we were we're off to a great start here. Let's save, let's save. Alright. We're gonna go start this mission with Samuel. Hey buddy, let's ready rock and to roll. Go. Just give the signal. I'm ready to go. I'm slightly wounded due to fish, but that's okay. Put this on my face. Using stealth. Okay. High Overseer Campbell leads the city's militant religious faction and is a close ally to the Lord Regent. Campbell is completely corrupt and holds the secret to Emily's location. Infiltrate the office of the High Overseer, steal Campbell's journal, and eliminate him. An ally to the Loyalists. Martin is being held there. Free him and allow him to escape. And also protect Jeff. Right. We are going to uh, leave off here and. Uh, We'll end the part there, I think. That sounds like a good place to leave it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this part, uh, I'm really enjoying this game. I don't know why we got so much stuff. That seems like... Uh, I still can't fix this. <laughs> it seems like a... Um, I think it must be... I, I bought the Collector's Edition, and it came with a bunch of DLC, and one of them was called The Assassin's Armaments, and I have to assume that that's what that is, because that was a lot of stuff that we got off the bat, and that seems weird to just give us so cool that we're off to such a good start um i wasn't expecting that but hey uh we'll be back next time for trying to track down the high overseer and i need to try and remember or figure out how to non-lethally get rid of him because we're trying to do this non-lethally and i do remember that you can uh non-lethally get rid of all the main bad guys so i, I don't know like or I assume most of the main bad guys i don't know this guy at least i remember that there is a way i just don't remember what it is Anyway, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please do tune in next time. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of other things as well if you want to check out any of the other videos. Thank you for watching. Uh, I will see you uh, next time, and I will see you in the district. Take care.